In this video, I'm going to give you tips on how to install rubber base. You're mainly going to see rubber base in an industrial or commercial setting. However, I've seen some people use this in their home, in their garage or basement. First thing I'm going to show you is how to cut outside corners. The best way to measure rubber base on an outside corner is to lay the rubber base against the wall and mark the outside corner on the back of the base. Then lay it flat. Then I'm going to use my speed square and lay it on the line I just marked. Then I'm going to take my utility knife and cut the base. When I make the cut, I'm not going to cut it all the way through. I'm only going to go about three quarters of the way. It may take a little practice to get the pressure just right. To get the best results for cutting rubber base, you need to have a sharp utility knife at all times. By using a sharp knife, you won't have to use as much pressure. Now if you go too deep, this is what's going to happen when you fold it. Then you'll have to cut a new piece. After I've made the cut, I'm going to flip the piece over flat and I'm going to lay my utility knife flat. This will put the blade at about a 60 degree angle. I don't want to go all the way through the base here either, otherwise I'll have a split in the front. What I'm doing here is actually mitering the base without cutting all the way through. This is why having a sharp blade is very important. You may want to take a piece of base and practice several times on that piece just to get the hang of it. This doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to look good. You're just taking out enough material so it'll bake the bend around the corner. Now you'll see here at the top of the base, I didn't make my cut all the way through. I do this so I won't see the cut when I wrap it around the corner. You can see how I stopped the cut before the top. Now you'll notice I didn't cut the shoe or the bottom of the base. That's because it's going to stretch around the corner and lay flat on the floor. If you were to make that cut through that area, it would just rip when you wrapped around the corner. Before I apply the glue, I'm going to heat the joint with a torch. This will make the base more pliable when I wrap it around the corner. As it cools down, it keeps its shape to the wall. This will keep it from pulling away from the wall while the glue dries. Another thing the heat will do is keep the joint from turning white as you fold it. You can see here during the demonstration how the base turns white without heat. After the heat, I apply three strips of glue on the back of the base. Then I apply a little bit extra at the cut I just made. Now at the time I shot this footage, I didn't know about using hot melt glue for the corner. So I would stop the glue right around the corner and then use hot melt glue to help it hold to the corner better. When you put the base on the ball and you're applying pressure, push away from the corner. This will stretch the base and help it stick better at the corner. This will help prevent the base from lifting up at the bend. If it does start pulling away from the wall, blue painter's tape will help hold it in place until the glue dries. There are two other ways that I know of to cut an outside corner. The next one I'm going to show you only works with a higher quality base. Because when I show you the fold I'm going to make, it turns the base white on the finished side of the base. After I make the cut, I'm going to fold it backwards like you see here. This method is much easier than laying the utility knife flat to remove the material. And it's easier to see how much material you're removing, making it less likely to go all the way through the base. Again, this is not going to work very well with an economy grade rubber base, especially with the darker colors. However, you can get away with it on the lighter colors. Now you can see here I'm being lazy and not following my own advice. Putting a new blade in the knife would make this a lot easier to cut. I didn't edit this out because I wanted you to see how important it is to have a sharp knife. The other method of cutting an outside corner is with a tool. If you want one, I'll leave a link in the description. They are a little expensive. However, they might be a little bit easier for a novice to use. The next joint I'm going to show you is an inside corner. There are two ways that I know of to do those. One is easier than the other and the most common. The one I'm going to show you now is the most common used. The first side of the inside corner, you're just going to butt the base right to the wall. Now the next piece I'm going to butt to this, I'm just going to take a pair of tin snips and clip the corner off at about a 22.5 to 45 degree angle. Then I'm going to butt the piece I just cut to the one against the wall. 
Now the reason why I say 22 and a half to 45 degree angle is because 45 degrees may be too much. And if I need to make an adjustment, I'll just need to clip the corner more. Once I'm happy with the fit, I'll glue it up. When you're laying up the base and pushing against the wall, always push the base to the joint or the seam. This will tighten it up and make it look much cleaner. There is another way that I know of to do an inside corner. I don't like it very much and it takes a lot longer to do. Some guys say it looks better when you do it this way. I'm not so sure. Maybe it's because I'm not that good at it and I think it takes too long. First thing I'll do is make a cut like I would if I was doing an outside corner. I won't cut it all the way through. For the outside corner, you don't cut the shoe of the base. For the inside corner, you do cut it and you do cut it all the way through. After you cut the shoe, you make the fold. Unlike the outside corner, I will not be back cutting the base. Now I'm going to take my snips and make a 45 degree angle cut on one side and leave it straight on the other side. And again, I may cut it less than a 45 just so I can make an adjustment. Now I like to heat it up a little bit just so the joint doesn't tear or turn white. Then I check to see how it fits. If I'm happy with the miter cut on the shoe, I'll glue it up. Now when you're gluing it up, you don't have to put a lot of glue on the back. Three 1 8 inch strips is more than enough. I know I've said this twice already, I just want you to know that you don't have to put too much glue on it. Some people think you have to cover the whole piece of base with glue. And as with all joints, when you're pushing it against the wall, you want to push towards the joint. I guess it doesn't look too bad. If you want to compare the two, let me know what you think in the comments below. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to butt two of them together. There's only two things you have to remember. One, make sure you're using factory edge to factory edge at all times. And two, when you're pushing the base against the wall, push the base toward the seam. Before I start pushing the base against the wall, I make sure my two pieces line up correctly. Working the seam will make it much less visible. Making the seam less visible will make it look like there's one long piece of base instead of several. One more thing I want to show you, which I, you may never see or have to do, is a bull nose corner to a door frame. You can't just butt this square to the frame and start turning the corner. What happens is it stretches and pulls the shoe part of it away from the frame. In order to get this to work, I have to cut the bottom to a point and cut the main part of the base at about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch back. This is what it looks like when I'm done cutting it. Then I'm going to cut the back side of the base on an angle. This will help it butt against the frame better. Now I can test fit it. Now I'm going to trim it a little bit to make it fit better. I'll keep trimming until I like the way it fits. Before I glue it up, I'm going to heat up the end and roll it. Then I'm going to let it sit for a minute to take shape. I'm not going to use ball base adhesive around the end where I've got it rolled.
Once I'm ready to install the base, I'll use hot melt glue on the bull nose part of the base. The glue sticks I'm using take longer to set up, so I have more time to position the base where I need it. Because the glue takes longer to set up, I need to hold it in place just a little bit longer. Also, the base is still warm from heating it up, so I get to work it a little bit, and get to push it against the frame to get a nice joint. I tried one of the corners without rolling the base, and it was a little bit harder to get it to stick, so I went back to rolling them. I tried a little bit more heat so I wouldn't have to roll it, and it turned out it was a little bit too hot to hold on to. And because I put too much heat in the rubber base, it took a little bit longer for the glue to set. Too hot. It sure was a lot easier to bend with the extra heat. When applying the glue to the back of the rubber base, you only need three 1 8 inch thick strips. When you're putting the strip of glue down towards the top of the base, you want to stay away from the edge about three quarters to an inch away. If you don't, the glue will squeeze out as you press the base against the wall. Also put a bead along the edge. This will help when you're working a seam and putting two pieces together. As always, I hope this helps. Until next time, thanks for watching.